This is Neil Rotnar Rock Talk here on WDST Radio Woodstock with another episode of This Week in Rock. Stories from the soundtrack of our lives, supported by Rock 101, a multimedia experience featuring a live band and a renowned music historian who will walk you through the stories of 10 classic songs that changed the history of music. For one night only on August 25th at the Woodstock Playhouse. Tickets and info at woodstockplayhouse.org. On August 13th, 1966, the Love and Spoonful song Summer in the City began a three-week run at number one. So today, I thought I'd tell you a few things about the song and the Love and Spoonful that you might not know. And as usual, a little background first. John Sebastian and Zal met in 1964 at the home of fellow musician Cass Elliott. That night... Elliot held a party at our home to watch the American television debut of The Beatles on The Ed Sullivan Show, and she encouraged Sebastian and Yanofsky to start playing together, eventually leading to the formation of The Love and Spoonful. Led by John Sebastian, their primary songwriter, the band took their earliest influences from jug band and blues music, and alongside their contemporaries The Birds, The Love and Spoonful pioneered the development of a new musical genre called folk rock. Beginning in July 1965 with their debut single, Do You Believe in Magic?, The Love and Spoonful had seven consecutive singles reach the top ten of the U.S. charts, including the number two hits Daydream and Did You Ever Have to Make Up Your Mind? And by 1966, The Love and Spoonful was one of the most highly regarded American bands, having had the year's third most best-selling singles behind The Beatles and Rolling Stones. After quickly completing their first two albums over a period of six months, the band needed new material for their next record. And as John Sebastian describes, he remembered a song composed and informally taped by his teenage brother, Mark. My brother had this song that he had written, and it was called Summer in the City. And uh, it had a fairly conventional start... It was summer in the city, you know it's going to get hot. The shadows of the buildings are the only shady spot. But at night it's a different world. I said, whoa, hold on. That part is fantastic. I said, how about this? Let me make the beginning kind of bunched up so that when we get to the these subdominant chords that they will uh, uh, kind of bring the, the piece out a little bit. Sebastian later compared his resulting first verse to the tension established in Mazorsky's Night on Bald Mountain, which he knew from the 1940 film Fantasia. John also incorporated a riff into the verse that session player Artie Schrock had played between takes during their sessions for the What's Up Tiger Lily soundtrack. And while recording the song, as Sebastian relates, the band determined that a bridge or middle eight was needed. It has a kind of a a duality to it because in the middle of the summer, of course, uh, the girls look wonderful and there's the freedom of being able to drop all the winter clothes, but then there's this element of nasty 42nd Street, you know, in the, in the days when it was all like these seedy porn houses. Okay, so halfway through working out summer in the city, all of a sudden there's a part for a middle eight. I said, you know what, this really reminds me of American in Paris. It goes, bing, 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 bum, 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 bing, bing, bing. Gershwin was imitating traffic. And we started talking about what if there were traffic. In in those days, if you wanted sound effects, you called a sound man. And it was a radio sound man. And the radio sound guy shows up with two big wheelum trunks of 78s. And I think I said, wouldn't it be funny if it all starts with one 
really puny sounding horn. And this old Jewish sound man goes, wait, I have a Volkswagen. And he plays it, it's perfect. We put the Volkswagen on the front and now it sounds like one little guy, and there's an explosion of, of horns. It's very New York. The sound of car horns in traffic was the first time these sounds appeared on a hit song. However, a year later, Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff used the idea when they produced the Soul Survivors track, Expressway to Your Heart. Summer in the City has a harder sound than the Love and Spoonful's previous output, and band member Steve Boone later expressed pleasure that the song departed from the band's softer image, helping to quickly change the attitudes of those who asked him when they were going to make a real rock song. The tune has been covered by several artists, including Quincy Jones, whose 1973 version won the Grammy Award for Best Instrumental Arrangement and has since been sampled by numerous hip-hop artists. Summer in the City was released on July 4, 1966, and quickly climbed the charts, and on August 13, 1966, it became the only number one hit for The Love and Spoonful. Okay, let's listen. The Love and Spoonful and... Summer in the City. <laughs> <laughs> 